All right, for the sheetrock unit, what you're gonna do is start off by getting some sheetrock. And you can find that underneath the safety glass case if there isn't some already placed on the table for you. You're, anytime that you're gonna need tools throughout this video, you'll be finding those over here in between the two drill presses. All right, so we have them all hung up neatly. This is where they need to be returned at the end of class. Make sure you do that. There are bins on the table. We have scrap pieces here of sheetrock, and there's also some blocks of wood over here that you'll be using throughout the project. For now, we're gonna work on the table. So I'm just gonna get in a position where you guys can see, and then we're gonna mark off 12 inches of sheetrock for this particular activity. I can use a square, and on the square, you'll find there's a ruler. I'm gonna mark 12 inches with my pencil. Notice I'm using the outside edge. Don't use the inside because it doesn't take account for this uh, material here. So start from the edge, go over 12. Now I can take my square, turn it sideways, and pull it tight against the wood. Slide it over so my mark lines up. You can mark it with a pencil. Go over to the board. I'm gonna grab my utility knife. Make sure that you hold up here and you're cutting away from yourself. You never wanna to cut towards yourself. This thumb right here is kind of in a bad spot because if the blade jumps onto this metal, it's gonna go quickly. So holding like this would be better for when you start the cut. Then when you get further in, now you can spread your thumb or your fingers out a little bit and continue the cut. Always cut away from yourself. You're only trying to cut a piece of paper. Sheetrock has two layers of paper with gypsum in the middle. So you're not trying to cut through the entire thing right now. You're just cutting a piece of paper with a razor knife. So you shouldn't be pressing too hard. Always close the blade when you're done. And flip the piece of sheetrock. Now you can see I've cut this line. I'm gonna turn it sideways. I'm just gonna give it a little punch to the back. Just a tap and you'll see that this breaks very nicely. The next thing I'm gonna do is take that razor blade and cut the paper on the back side, like so. Now I have my one block. The next thing I'm gonna do is move over to one of the units here that are in devices. And I'm gonna grab a screw gun and some screws. I'm gonna take that block of wood that or block of sheetrock that I had. I'm gonna hold it up over the top of this square. I'm gonna use the screw gun, place the screw on the end of the gun, and I'm gonna screw this on. The proper depth for a screw is just beneath the surface of the paper. What you don't want to do is go too deep because then it loses its strength, it cracks the gypsum underneath. Four screws should be plenty for this. All right, here comes the fun part. I go over to my tools and I'm gonna grab a hammer. In the center, I'm just gonna give it one hit and this is gonna represent a hole in the wall. Like that, okay? Don't go off and take a full swing because you'll really do a lot of damage to the back side of the block. All right, next step. I grab a scrap piece of sheetrock. And now I'm gonna teach you how to repair this hole that's here. Take the scrap piece, put it over the top. Put your initials on it. And trace. It's okay to be a little bit big on the whole size. So we're gonna cut this out. You take your scrap piece, put it here. You might also wanna actually put an up arrow so you know which way it was up when you put this back in. We're gonna cut this out with what's called a keyhole saw. So I'll grab that off the tool rack over here. To get started, I'm gonna line up my blade 
on the outside edge of the hole. It said it's okay to be a little bit big in this. I'm just going to turn and push, turn and push, and it's kind of like carving a pumpkin. I'm going to stay on the outside of my lines. Now remember I said take it easy when you're hitting with that hammer. See the small hole on the front? Look how big of a hole it made on the back side here. Okay, so don't go off and take a full swing. Just a couple taps in the middle get the hole in there. All right, so I have this piece. Now what you couldn't do if this were a real wall is just put this in there and leave it there. It's just going to fall through. The other thing you can't do is reach behind a wall like this because it would be the rest of the wall there. So we're going to have to put some bracing behind here. And this is where the wood blocks come in. So I grab a wood block, I grab a screw, load it into the gun. From the front side, feed that wood block through so it fits across the center of the hole. And screw that in. You're gonna have to hold both times. So it doesn't break this over here. If I just tried pushing this screw in, this sheetrock would break over here. All right, so make sure you hold on to that piece of wood both times. Again, the depth of the screw's head should be just beneath the surface of the paper. After that, you're going to take your scrap piece that you have, line it up, one more screw, right in the middle. Now that's in place. This is sturdy. It's not going to get another hole in it. Now I'm going to put some tape on it. So back to the tools. You want to grab a tape, some tape and some scissors. Finding the end of this can be tricky. So I'm going to pull this back like so. And you're just going to cut off enough to cover the gap that's there. And then we'll have to get some mud, sheetrock compound, we'll fill this in. Alright, to apply the mud, you would get a gallon of sheetrock compound, and you're also going to need one of these spackle knives. You're just going to take a little bit of spackle here and smear it on. It's kind of like frosting a cake. And you're just going to cover up the hole, squeeze it through that, those square openings in that tape that was there. Any extra you have, you can just scrape it back off into the bucket. And this would be coat one. Now if we were doing this out of real house, you would let this dry, come back, and put another coat on and build this layer up and then after the second coat's dry you would sand off lightly some of the high spots then go back again with a third coat and then you should have built it up thick enough to the point where you couldn't see any of this but thin enough so you couldn't see a bulge in the wall so you'd be hiding up the mess that was there and then you're ready for some primer and some paint so that's our sheetrock unit once you get to this point you got to get checked off the hardest part of this whole project is cleaning up. Your next step, take the screw gun, put it into reverse. Take out the four screws. Notice I didn't cover these four screws with blaster. And you can put these screws back into the box or the can of screws. Careful taking the last one out, you don't want to drop it. And on the back side, this is what our repair looks like. And you kind of see the sheetrock compound is pushed in to all the cracks that were there. 
All right, so as long as it's checked off, this is garbage. And then you need to sweep up your mess first, put all the tools away, the floor needs to be swept, and grab some wet paper towels and mop off the table and the vices. Get rid of all the dust. We don't need a lot of dust in here. All right, thanks.